Welcome everyone to the Dash Fight Tekken 7 Feng Wei tutorial. My name is Joey Fury. I'm a tournament player and streamer representing Equinox Gaming. Over the past year, Feng Wei has become one of my staple tournament characters. You may have seen me playing him in the Bud Light and ICFC brackets. He's received some significant improvements in seasons 3 and 4. I think he's a very interesting character and he is quite strong at the moment. I'm going to show you his central tools, his game plan, some staple combos, and then we will talk about his strengths and weaknesses. Let's do it. Jab, 1-2, and 1-3. So Feng's game plan is focused on poking, so naturally he will make use of his jab options very often. 1-2 and 1-3 are both quite strong. 1-2 has good range and is plus 7 on hit. 1-3 uh, is plus 6 on hit, and there's actually a counter hit property on the second hit. They swing after the first jab, that second kick is going to counter hit knockdown, and it's going to get you a free shoulder right after. Um, you want to use jab 1-2 and 1-3 to get the pressure started with Feng and set the pace. Just be careful not to overuse 1-3 because the second hit can be ducked and launched. Back 4. So we're slowly building up the structure of Feng's poke game. Back 4 here is a 12 frame mid with excellent tracking. This move should be used very often to stop the opponent's desire to challenge Feng's plus frames and also to stop them from trying to sidestep Feng's pressure. Back 4 is very fast, it's low risk, you can opt to throw this move out a lot to kind of earn your right to go low against the opponent and also just make them stationary so they're not trying to move around so much. Quarter circle forward 1 plus 2. So this is a very important move for Feng, it's a multifaceted tool, it accomplishes a lot for him. It acts as a strong mid check option to pair with his strong low presence, which we will get to. It uh, gets plus frames on block, it's going to put them in crouch and give Feng plus 4. It also yields a very nice reward on counter hit, it's going to give him a free stomp, it's going to look like this. So the only thing about this move, it can feel linear at times, so place it tactfully and make sure you're controlling their sidestep with back 4. Down 2. So we've looked at some quick strikes with the jab strings, we've got some mid checks with back 4 and quarter circle forward 1 plus 2, so let's start looking at some of these low options to get some mix-ups going. Down 2 is my favorite low option with Feng. It hits hard for 17 damage, only minus 12 on block, it's not too bad. It yields great damage on counter hit, it's actually going to get us a guaranteed stomp again, it'll look like that, and it high crushes. So you can get the opponent ducking quickly with this move, you can get them kind of hesitant to throw out highs. Its weakness is its poor tracking, so again you want to place it carefully, and again make sure you're using back 4 to control the opponent's movement. Down back 3. So this is the low with Feng. This is the low that's going to instill the most fear in the opponent. It's a very strong pressure tool. It forces the opponent into crouch and puts Feng at plus four. It's 16 frames fast. It has a high crush property and it also has an amazing counter hit property that does heavy damage. It's gonna look like this. There's even a little bit of Oki there that we can talk about in just a second. And on top of all of this, it actually tracks very well. So what is the downside? It's minus 15 on block, so it carries some pretty high risk, but there's also strong mind game potential with this move because you can make the opponent want to duck so quickly. Um, after you get this counter hit knockdown, um, you can hit them if they try to move by pressing down three plus four. Um, there's a little bit of nuance to why you want to hit down 3 plus 4, that's kind of beyond the scope of this segment. Um, but if they move at all, you can tap them for a little extra damage there with that toe kick. Back 3 plus 4. Back Kempo stance. So Feng's back Kempo is an amazing option. It produces a very unique threat in open space neutral. Back Kempo allows Feng to create more space in one quick burst. So you can even do this out of back dash, just like back dash, back Kempo. If he happens to time this back campo during an opponent's approach option, he can get a free whiff punish or a free mix-up depending on the recovery of the whiffed option. So if they whiff pretty big, 
I can do back tempo 3 for a full launcher. If it's a small whiff, I might want to do back tempo 2, just a fast high, leads to a free shoulder. Um, or if they recover pretty fast, they're in a mix up between back tempo 3 and back tempo 1, which is the low option that puts Fang at plus 8. Back 1 plus 2. This is a 13 frame mid punisher that leads to a knockdown. It is very negative on block, but it really shouldn't ever get blocked as you will use this in situations where it's guaranteed. It acts as a simple, fast whiff punisher with great range. You want to use this for small and medium sized whiffs from the opponent as you're moving around the screen. Always keep the shoulder locked and loaded. Down forward 2-2. Two, two. This is a safe on block mid wall bounce that does 36 damage. The one exception, be careful, Yoshimitsu can actually launch punish this move. It's a bit obscure, but it's good to know. It's an excellent option for people who are hard ducking against Feng. We've talked a bit about these good mid check options for people who are ducking, paired with his strong low options. Uh, down forward 2 2 is going to give you, you know, a bit more damage without having to commit to a punishable attack. Back 1. Back 1 is a 10 frame, minus 10 on block, counter hit knockdown strike. You get that counter hit, it's going to lead to a free shoulder. This is an essential counter hit tool in Feng's arsenal, and I think it should receive special attention in your game plan. So it functions offensively in that you can keep the opponent in check when they're challenging even simple things like your jab pressure, challenging after you're down forward one, after you're down four, but it also works defensively. If your opponent is pressing you outside of the plus frames that they've earned, you know, if you can find that gap and fit this back one in there, it's very rewarding. And again, the risk is not too bad. It's only minus 10 on block. Very strong tool. Up forward two. Up forward two is another multifaceted tool in Feng's arsenal. This is an 18 frame mid with a built in sidestep left. This move allows you to escape many pressure situations from the opponents. It also allows Feng to slip away from the opponent's retaliations to his own pressure. You can use this move to get away from the wall when the opponent is pressuring you. You can use this move to keep them against the wall when they're trying to step away from it. This move has a lot of utility. It even has a counter hit knockdown property. So what we're starting to do is see how Feng is very slippery as a character. We just talked about how back one can be annoying for them as they're trying to pressure you. Now we got up forward two slipping away, got back campo, and we're gonna keep taking this a little bit further with the next few moves. One plus two. One plus two is Fang's X Factor. This move can turn the momentum in an instant. This move allows Fang to fully launch the opponent for what would otherwise be the safest of decisions in other matchups. All he needs to do is read a punch option from the opponent, and this move can yield a full launcher. This move is a punch sabaki. So what that means is that during the startup frames of this move, frames two through nine, if Feng gets hit by any punch attack, he's just gonna parry it and turn it into a full launcher. That's gonna look like this. If that weren't enough, this move is actually also really good just when it hits normally. If you get a normal hit, timing is a bit tight, but you can run up and get a free shoulder right away. Looks like that. And it's only minus 12 on block. So now we've got an opponent that has to worry about back one, up forward two, and a punch Sabaki, and back Kempo as they're trying to pressure this character. Up forward four. So this is a 15 frame hop kick, minus 13 on block, with unfortunately stubby range. Nonetheless, this is an essential launcher. You're going to be using this when you make something whiff from sidestep. You're going to use this to resist your opponent's low pressure, and it's also an option to kill them for ducking if you get in close. And it also kind of plays into this defensive arsenal of moves we've been discussing. You know, resisting the opponent's pressure with back one, up forward two, back tempo, the sabaki. 
Now we've got the hop kick challenge in the mix and this character is looking really scary to try to pressure. So let's talk about Fang's game plan and his strengths. So in my opinion, Fang excels at producing strong poke based mix ups. This is going to start off of his jab strings like we talked about, one, one, two, and one, three. And then his very strong low options. He's got down back three and down two like we talked about. He actually has many more if you dig into the move list a little bit more. Down four, down three plus four, down back two, two. That's going to be a counter hit launcher. Court circle forward one, counter hit launcher. There's a lot here in addition to his strong mid checks. We talked about back four, court circle forward one plus two. He's also got DF1, wall standing one, two, down forward two, two, down forward three. Plenty of stuff to try to make them stop ducking. Keep putting them in these mix ups. So as he's producing these mix ups, Feng can look to capitalize on the opponent's mistakes with his strong whiff punishment. So I mentioned back one plus two, it's going to be our go to. But this isn't quite enough. You have to master a few other whiff punishers with Feng to really take him to the next level. A uh, very important one, it's going to be forward one plus two. It has huge range, instant tailspin. Um, it is a high, however, but still very important. And then for the even bigger whiffs, we're going to be rocking the forward three, four. And so with these three options together, we should be able to handle just about every type of whiff from the opponent. On top of this, we're poking, we're whiff punishing, and now we're looking to make critical plays with Fang's powerful defensive options. I talked about that punch Sabaki. Whoops. If you can make a read with this, if you can make a read on the low with the hop kick, we also have up forward two, back one, back tempo. Something we haven't talked about is the backswing blow. I'll show you the combos off of that when we get to the combo section. And really last thing, Feng's move list is really expansive. Just about every tool has a utility that you can find. There's many new layers of Feng's game that can be unlocked just by looking deeper into the move list. Weaknesses. So Feng is not without faults. Um, obviously lacking in his move list is a strong counter hit launcher. You will not find a counter hit launching magic four a spammable down forward two like Law or Paul. You won't find a heavy counter hit strike like Brian three plus four, Geese down forward two, Marduk down back two, anything like that. The closest thing to a just do it launcher like that with Fang is forward one plus two, which is like a 19 frame high homing attack. Um, you need to stack up damage more slowly and deliberately with Fang. Got to earn your damage from his counter hit low strikes or his counter hit QCF one plus two or his counter hit range zero options like back one and standing four. Again, Feng is a poke based character, not a counter hit launcher based character. The other thing I would say, Feng's block punishment can be a bit lacking in some regards. When Feng blocks moves in the minus 15 to minus 17 range, there's a definite possibility that this hop kick is not going to reach. It's not gonna get the job done. So you'll have to settle for like back one plus two or down back one four. And lastly, Fang tends to rely on getting in close on the opponent to apply this poke based pressure. So characters with excellent backdash distance and keep out game can be a real problem for Fang's game plan. Um, just to name a few, I would think of Eddie, Noctis, Elisa, Kunimitsu, characters like that. I'm going to show you the important combo routes I think you should know. This first one I'm going to show off of up forward four, but it also works off of while standing three. Back tempo 3, 2 slide 1-1, one, one, forward 3-4, and counter hit down back 2-2, two, two, just to name a few of them. So this first combo route's going to look like this. So a few things, that combo ender, the dash up, down forward 4-2, two, 1 plus 2, you do not want to try that if you are off axis to the right. That ender is a bit more reliable if you are off axis slightly to the left. The other thing is, if you drop that ender, they can tech roll and kill you. And it's a little bit riskier to try on small characters. So if you're on smalls, you can omit the jab in the combo and just do it like this. So another route to know, it's going to be very similar. It's going to look like this. That forward 3-4 ender is very good, it sets up great Oki because the opponent can only tech in one direction and they cannot spring kick and they cannot toe kick. 
To do that forward three, four ender, you should do it when you are off axis to the right. That's why we have a sidestep right in that combo. Next, we've got the combos off forward one plus two. I mentioned this is a very important whiff punisher. This first one is my preferred combo and it works on all characters. And the second one is a little bit more damage, but it only works on medium and large characters. Now we have combos off of 1 plus 2. Like I mentioned earlier, if you hit this move normally, you get dash up shoulder for free. And if you get the sabaki, the combo is going to look like this. So this is the combo I recommend doing there. Do not try to end this combo with forward 3, 4. Like I mentioned earlier, you want to be off axis right. And in this combo, we are super off axis left. So I like just keeping it simple and ending this combo with down forward 4, 3. So now we'll look at the combos off of down forward 3. As long as you are on axis, you can get this deep wall carry route. It looks like this. If you're off axis a little bit, you can keep it simple. Do this one. But again, that down forward 4, 2, 1 plus 2 ender is not going to work if you're off axis to the right. So in those instances, you'll just have to keep it safe and just do uh, an even more simple ender. Okay, here's the combo off of counter hit back forward 1, thanks backswing blow. It's going to look like this. That stomp is guaranteed right there, they cannot get out of that. Here are the combos off of counter hit quarter circle forward 1. If we want max damage, we're going to do this route. And if we want to make things a little bit easier, we can do forward 3-4 at the beginning instead. So last thing, low parry combos. These are very important routes to get down because they're going to get you a lot of wall carry while still maintaining pretty high damage. I've seen a lot of Feng players that are doing these like multiple down forward 1 combo routes and they're just missing out on so much damage. So the routes that I like to do. gonna get you a lot of wall carry or if you need damage so that three slide four three ender is a little sketchy though I don't always trust it so if you just want to go for more reliable damage you can modify the route to do this and there you go you can check out all the things shown in this video in the text version via the link in the description. If you like this video, please leave a like or a comment below with your thoughts. Once again, my name is Joey Fury. Thanks so much for watching.